Hello everyone, my name is Brian McInerney. I'm the hydrologist here with the National Weather Service. Today is April 7th, 2015. This briefing was giving, uh, this is the short version of the briefing that was given to the Utah water users in the media yesterday on uh, April 6th. Um, so I thought I would just use the same uh, template for this. So before we get going, let's take a look at the weather patterns and the precip anomaly and the dominant weather feature that really has driven the weather up to this point. And, and we've looked at this before if you've heard these briefings, but what I wanted to do is compare. Here's the big high pressure, and these are the winds, the rend rendition of the winds at 11,500 feet. And you can see the jet stream kind of flows in this sine wave type pattern, but the western U.S. is under a very large high pressure ridge that rotates clockwise, and the eastern half of the U.S. is in a counterclockwise trough. And so the eastern half of the U.S. is very cold, very wet, and the western part is very warm, very dry due to this. And I had a, when I was looking at this, I thought, I wonder what it looked like last year in 2014. So I went and dug up the data, and this is what I found. And it's almost an exact replica of what we had this year to some extent. The big trough in the west, and the, or I'm sorry, the big ridge in the west, and the big trough in the east. And my feeling is if you went back and looked at 2013 and 2014, you'd see something very similar. And that's why we've been so dry for the past four years. And when you look at the actual precip numbers, and we go back to the start of the water year in October, warm colors indicate below average precipitation. And when you look at October, we started the water year in really bad shape with all these reds, which indicate maybe 10% of normal, 20% of normal. Then we move forward to November and more of the same with uh, dark browns indicating maybe 20 to 30, maybe 30 to 50% in some areas, and you know, just starting off two months. But then December happened, and right around Christmas, we had a really good storm system that moved through, broke through the trough, and put down uh, some pretty good snow. So now we're at, at the end of December thinking maybe we're gonna break out of this, maybe the ridge won't uh, be parked over us, and unfortunately, it rebuilt. We saw what we saw in that earlier rendition of the winds at 11,500, and that caused the, the dearth of precipitation in the mountains. You know, we're looking at 30 to 50 percent of normal. Then we move to February, more of the same, even some areas that didn't receive any precipitation whatsoever. Then we moved to March, and we had some in southern Utah up to five inches of water. We thought maybe that would help the water supply situation down there, but it really didn't because the ridge built back in, hot, dry conditions, and all that water just kind of evaporated and went away. And then when you look at the rest of March, we really haven't had much, if any, precipitation at all. So when you look at precipitation-wise, it was a tough go. When you look at the temperature, and this is really the big story of what, what drove this year, uh, this is a graphic at the Salt Lake City Airport departure from normal. Uh, anything that's warmer, the lines go up. Anything that's, that's uh, cooler, the lines go down. And when you look at the first 13 days of December, it was the warmest ever since 1874. Then we had 48 days consecutively of above normal temperatures, which is really unheard of. Then we move into February. We had the hottest February on record. Then we move into March. We had the hottest March on record. And when you're trying to build a snowpack and you're trying to get uh, a snowpack that's healthy and aerial extent is quite large, you're not going to get it when you have these types of temperatures. So another way to look at this is let's just take February average temperature of 34.2 degrees. We saw that in January when the average temperature was, was 34.3 degrees. When you look at the normal March average temperature at 43.6, we saw that in February. The normal high temperature for April 7th and April 8th is 59. We saw that uh, in March. So we're one month ahead of where we typically are, which is really a difficult way to go. When you look at snowpack as of April 7th and you average the basins together, this is what you see. Areas uh, farther west are doing quite poor. Areas farther east are doing a little better. But another thing to consider is, is these measurements are made in higher elevation, north-facing tree-lined slopes. With the heat we had, anything on the south-facing aspects were gone, lower elevations were gone, and these are overestimated amounts for snowpack. When you look at the water supply volumes, this is what we see. Uh, really uh, a tough go all the way around. Western basins uh, reflecting, you know, like a near 
Salt Lake County, the mountains uh, just to the east, 20%, the Virgin at 25%, the Severe at 35%, and into Lake Powell at 52%. Things are a little bit better the farther east you go, but again, this is a, a tough look all the way through. And these are the median basin forecasts for each basin. Another thing to consider is last summer, during July, we had really good precipitation. And typically, we don't include summertime thunderstorm rainfall into the water supply equation because the volume of water is so small. But in July, we had really good precipitation. Then August, we had three to 400 percent in some areas. And then September, we had really good precipitation. And what this added up to was, was not a whole lot of volume flowing in the rivers, but people used rainwater as opposed to stored water in the reservoirs. And as a result, the reservoirs today are in better shape than they were last year at this time. And that's a direct result of people not using the stored water. They use rainwater during this time. So are we going to have something similar? We really don't know, but that's something to consider at this point. So there you have it. This is Brian McInerney. There's my phone number, my email. Uh, I know this is a, a pretty tough year water supply wise. Hopefully 2016 water year starting in October will be better. But that's what we have. This will be the last water supply briefing that we will be giving uh, this year. And again, tough year. And I do appreciate you taking the time to listen to this and we'll go from there. Thank you.